Hi there, this is my third video on Bolt and in this video I'll show you the best feature that I like about Bolt. In this video we're going to start working with collisions but the way that we'll implement collisions is actually the interesting part. So if you used BuildBox before there is a node called if collide and the functionality of this node is what we're going to try to make in this video. So the feature that I really like in Bolt is the fact that you can create your own nodes. Now in BuildBox you can create your own nodes too, but you have to code them. In Bolt you can actually use nodes to create other nodes. That is pretty cool. And how you do that is by creating another macro. So we can go to our assets, right click, create, then under Bolt we have the flow macro that we're going to be using and we'll call it if collide. Okay, now we have a new macro. There's different types of collisions that you can register in Unity. So for this purpose, I'll be looking on the 3D triggers. To have the triggers working, you need to make sure that both of your objects that you want to collide have a box collider or some kind of a collider. And one of them should have a rigid body. So I have a rigid body on my tractor and the trees have a box collider. Also in the box collider, there's an option for is trigger. And if either one of the collided object have is trigger on, the collision between those objects is gonna be registered as a trigger. Okay, so that's just some background in the setup for Unity. But now let's start creating our graph. So what we're looking for is on trigger enter and you can see that there's on trigger enter and on trigger enter 2d and the plain one is actually the 3d version of it so we're going to use this one and this is an event we have the flow connection output from here and a collider and the collider is the collider component of the object that the object collided with and right now this event is going to be triggered every single time that our object is going to collide with another object and that's not what we're looking for. We want to actually filter out what we want to collide with. So what I'm looking here for is the collision between the tree and the tractor. And I already went ahead and set up a tag as an enemy for my tree. You can use a tag here and then select the tag from the list. So every single tree is tagged as an enemy now. And the tag is the way that I want to filter out the collisions. So in our graph, I can drag out a connection. I want to get the tag. Game object, get tag. There is the node that we're looking for. And this returns a string. Now I want to compare this string with another string. So if we expand the string group, under there we can find equals a, b. And that's what I'm looking for. And here I can pass in the value that I want to compare with and it can be enemy. But instead of hard coding this value in, I want to give an option for an input to my macro to control that. So we can go ahead and find the input node. And this is the one that I'm looking for, the input in nesting. And I'll need to go to full screen to see the options for the input. So right here I have the graph inspector and the options that I have is a control inputs, which is the flows. And the other one is the value. So I'm looking for adding a value input specifying the key. The key is just a unique key that's gonna be used for the connection. So I'll say tag. You can write a custom label, but if you leave it empty, the key is gonna be used for the labels. For the type, I want to select the string. And here we go, you can see that our input has a tag output, and now we can create the connection with our string equals. So now we have a Boolean output, if the tags match or not, and we want to use this Boolean output to branch out. And what a branch does, it allows you to connect the flow. And based on the Boolean input, it gives you the option what you want to do for true and what you want to do for false. And we're just interested in the true value. But now we want to connect it to an output. The same way as we did for the input, there is an output node that we can use. So there's the output. And under here, we also have control outputs and value outputs. So we want to add a control output and we'll name it true and now we can create a connection to our output and that's pretty much it what we had to do to create our custom node so how you would use that is if we go back to move we can drag this if collide to our move flow and there's our input tag and we have a true output flow you can go inside this if collide by double clicking there's some things that i want to change about it so if we select the input 
there is an option has a value. If we enable that and go back to move, we can see that we have the ability of inputting the value for it now. And that's a pretty nice option. Also, I want the output to have a game object that we collided with and we can do that by adding another value output so for our value output we'll name it object and the type that we're looking for is the game object so now we have this connection that we can use and from our collider we want to get the game object so right there it gets the game object from the component and we can connect it to our output so i think this node is ready to be used so inside here we can specify that we're looking for tag enemy. And if the collision is true, we want to destroy the game object. So we can use the object that we collided with and look for destroy game object, and we can connect the true flow. Now, if we click play, you can see whenever we collide with a tree, the tree gets destroyed. So this is a quick demonstration of how to use nodes to create other nodes. And I think it's pretty cool. You can add more logic to this node and that will get updated in every use of this graph. One useful option that I think would be nice to have here is the ability of having all as an input and that input would trigger that if collide will be triggered by everything around it. We can quickly do that by using the string equals. What we wanna do is compare our tag to the value all and the Boolean output value. And we can connect it to an or operator, meaning that if one of these conditions is true, then we get a true output and use that to control our branch. Also in our input, we can specify the default value of all. So whenever you use this if collide, the default value is gonna be set to all. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and you can see how cool this option in Bolt is. So write in the comments what you think about this video, click on the like button and I'll see you in the next video.